Hello friends, in this video we will understand. What is facial palsy? What is Bell's palsy? Differential diagnosis of facial palsy and Bell's palsy. And treatment approaches of these palsies as a physiotherapist. At the end, we'll look at recent advances and references that include books and articles for you to refer. If you enjoy the content do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Press the bell icon near the subscribe button so you'll never miss an update. But before we learn about facial palsy let's have a brief look at the path of facial nerve also known as course of facial nerve. The facial nerve begins from the facial nucleus. The nerve first travels around the nucleus of the sixth cranial nerve, i.e., abducent nerve. Afterwards, the facial nerve travels with the auditory nerve in the internal auditory canal and enters the facial canal, where it soon reaches the geniculate ganglion containing the neuronal cell bodies for taste and ear sensation. Now let's look at the branches of the nerve. The first branch or the greater petrosal nerve travels to the lacrimal gland. The second branch runs to the stapedius muscle. The third branch or the corda tympani nerve travels to the tongue. The nerve exits the facial canal at the stylomastoid foramina, where it passes through the parotid gland and spreads out to innervate 23 facial muscles. It is important to note that the facial nerve does not innervate the masseter and lateral and medial pterygoid muscles as they are innervated by the trigeminal nerve or the fifth cranial nerve. So now let's understand what is facial palsy. Facial palsy is caused by damage to the facial nerve, i.e., cranial nerve 7, that supplies the muscles of the face. It can be categorized into two types based on the location of the casual pathology. Central facial palsy. Peripheral facial palsy. Central nerve palsy occurs due to damage above the facial nucleus or supranuclear lesions. We'll look at the causes of these lesions in a minute but keep in mind that any pathology above the facial nucleus will cause central nerve palsy. Now peripheral palsy occurs due to damage at or below the facial nucleus, i.e., infranuclear lesions so any pathology below the facial nucleus will cause peripheral nerve palsy. If we look at facial palsy from clinical scenario, you'll come across only a few cases of central facial palsy. Most common type in clinics is peripheral facial palsy cases, i.e., infranuclear lesions the most common being idiopathic, famously known as Bell's palsy. Another important clinical tip to remember here is that Bell's palsy is a diagnosis of exclusion meaning all possible causes must be excluded or ruled out before diagnosing Bell's palsy. Let's see what causes central facial palsy first then understand Bell's palsy and finally we'll look at how you can differentiate them in a clinical setting. Causes of central facial palsy Numerous diseases cause facial palsy in adults, including Trauma Infections Tumors Besides these causes even brainstem disorders such as multiple sclerosis and strokes is known to cause central facial palsy. Most commonly you shall see patients with stroke have central nerve palsy. Let's understand Bell's palsy now and then we shall understand how you can differentiate central vs peripheral facial paralysis. Bell's palsy is primarily a motor deficit. It is facial weakness of the lower motor neuron type caused by facial nerve involvement outside the central nervous system, without evidence of oral or more widespread neurologic disease, has been designated Bell's palsy. Causes of Bell's palsy The cause is unclear, but the disorder occurs more commonly in pregnant women and diabetics. Increasing evidence suggests that reactivation of herpes simplex virus type 1 infection in the geniculate ganglion may injure the facial nerve and is responsible for Bell's palsy in at least some patients. Clinical Presentation Bell's palsy has an equal racial and sex distribution. Cases occur in all ages, but the incidence increases with age. 
it is rare for Bell's palsy to be bilateral or to recur. Facial weakness is often preceded or accompanied by pain about the ear. Weakness generally comes on abruptly but may progress over several hours or even a day or so. The commonest symptoms that patient may give are For it is without furrowing. There will be drooping of the eyebrows and wrinkles of the brow or smooth hand out. There will be lack of blinking because of paralysis of the orbicular esoculi, thus the palpebral fissures are wider on the affected side and closure of the eye is impossible, so tears spill out of the eye and patient complaints of blurred vision. When the patient attempts to close his eyes, his eyeball will move upward and slightly inward this is called as Bell's phenomenon. The cheek is flaccid, and saliva and fluids may escape from the corner of the mouth because of drooping of the corner of the mouth. Paralysis of buccinator leads to accumulation of food between the teeth and the cheek. There will also be dribbling of saliva from the corner of the mouth. Creases and skin fold of the face becomes smooth hand. Retraction of mouth and pursing of the lip is not possible. Patient complains of heaviness or numbness of the face. Taste is intact. Distortion of the mouth causes the tongue to deviate to the sound side when protruded thus giving false impression of the hypoglossal lesion. Depending upon the site of the lesion, there may be associated impairment of taste, lacrimation, or hyperacusis. Because the stapedius muscle is supplied by a branch of the facial nerve, which leaves the nerve in the facial canal proximal to the corda tympani. There may be paralysis of all muscles supplied by the affected nerve, complete palsy, or variable weakness in different muscles, in complete palsy. Difference between Bell's and facial palsy? This table will help you to understand the difference between facial and Bell's palsy presentation. You can diagnose patients based on this table. Keep in mind that facial palsy is upper motor neuron palsy or central nerve palsy whereas Bell's palsy is lower motor neuron or peripheral nerve palsy. That is all for today. We shall learn about differential diagnosis of facial palsy, assessment, and physiotherapy treatment in the next video. If you like the content make sure to like, share and subscribe the channel.